I want to move on to the uh, issue of gun legislation. Passing new gun laws, another big uh, dominating issue for President Obama's second term agenda. He barely mentioned it yesterday, and now it seems the contentious battle over gun control has moved to New Hampshire. There was a, a drama at a, a town hall meeting of Senator Kelly Ayotte, one of the lawmakers who voted against the Mansion Toomey deal. The freshman senator was confronted by Erica Lafferty. That's the daughter of the school principal who was killed in the Sandy Hook massacre. Take a listen. You had mentioned that day the burden on um, owners of gun stores that the expanded background checks would cause. Um, I'm just wondering why the burden of my mother being gunned down in the hall of her elementary school isn't as important as that. Why is that not something that can be supported? Erica, um, certainly let me just say that um, I I'm obviously so sorry, and as everyone here, no matter what our views are, uh, for what you have been through. And um, I think that ultimately, when we look at what happened in Sandy Hook, I understand that's what drove this whole discussion. All of us want to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Now, Ayotte is one of six senators who are experiencing repercussions from voting against background checks. She's now facing angry voters back home and a coordinated effort by gun control groups to turn her vote into a political liability. We're joined now by Leah Gunn Barrett, executive director of New Yorkers Against Gun Violence. Leah, thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, you look at what's happening. You look at the daughter there who was speaking. With, does this sort of pressure work and will this turn perhaps some votes? Uh, well, first of all, I think what Kelly Iote did and the other senators who voted against background checks, a watered-down version of background checks, mind you, um, was uh, kowtowing completely to their NRA masters. In fact, her talking points memo came directly from the NRA when she turned the question around saying it was really a question about mental health, which is completely false. Uh, it's not about that. It's about access to guns. And uh, having background checks on potential felons, uh, domestic abusers, other people, uh, people who are seriously mentally ill is just basic common sense. Um, back in 2001, when special forces went into Af Afghanistan after 9-11, they recovered a training manual that Al-Qaeda was using, which said that uh, terrorists should come gun shopping in America because it's so easy to get guns, no background checks required. So we're seeing repercussions right now we for are. those who have voted against it. Uh, does it work and will it, will it shift the dynamics here? This is just a little bit of I a reaction to this now. I think it will. I think the American people, um, uh, Sandy Hook was a wake-up call for them, mm -hmm. uh, the slaughter of 26-year-olds. But every single day, don't forget, Richard, over 30 Americans die from guns. That's 30, over 31,000 every year. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a slow motion uh, mass murder. And our politicians are willfully ignoring that and following the, their, their NRA masters because they're getting money, political contributions from them. Well, the seems, American people are, are angry about that. And it seems like they're taking them out on the polls right now. The question is, is how sticky it might be. And will they remember in 18 months? What's your well, thought? Well, definitely. Because, you know, I, I hate to say this, but they're going to be other massacres. As long as we have high capacity ammunition magazines out there, assault weapons and the amount of guns that we have and people who are able to buy them without background checks, yes, you can bet your bottom dollar will be some more massacres. And so people will continue to become outraged. Uh, there perhaps could, we hope not, uh, but there is going to be uh, some assistance from the NRA as they move forward towards 2014 and election day. The NRA coming out and helping Kelly Ayotte. Uh, take a listen to this. Kelly Ayotte is not just a senator, she's also a mom who cares about protecting our kids. It's why Kelly had the courage to oppose misguided gun control laws that would not have prevented Sandy Hook. So, do these help or hurt the senator? What is misguided about requiring background checks on potential gun buyers when you're trying to prevent people who have a criminal record uh, who should not be having guns? What is misguided about that? I'd like to know. Most American people would like to know. Nine, over 90% of Americans think this is basic common sense. Even most NRA members, even most gun So, owners. if voters do believe that, uh, absolutely. does this NRA assistance help or hurt her, though, because she's being associated with... I think it hurts her. I think the, yeah. the NRA is not that popular. You know, they claim they 
they have four million members. Of course, that figure vacillates between two and four million. Well, who they're really funded by, let's be clear about this. They're funded by the gun manufacturers. And the gun manufacturers are profiting from laws that Congress has passed, immunizing gun, the gun industry from lawsuits back in 2005. It was said by Sandy Froman, former president of the NRA, that this actually saved the gun industry from bankruptcy. Handgun sales over the past decade have doubled. After the assault weapons ban expired in 2004 with the help of the NRA lobbyists, guess what happened to rifle production in the United States? It shot up 38 percent. It's about money. It's about the industry. It's about profits. It's not about people's lives or the, of the safety of Americans or our children. And I think the American public is finally waking up to that. Early They're angry. And early ramifications we're seeing in the polls at this Absolutely. moment. Absolutely. It's, like, it's like the polls were correct. Thank you so much for stopping by today. You're very welcome. All right, back to our panel. Uh, Alex and Ruth, uh, first to you, Alex, on this. As you were listening to Leah Gunn Barrett describe some of the dynamics here and how sticky these polls might be, also in the consideration as a part of this is how Tea Party senators may have helped to draw these lines that senators like Kelly Ayotte had to then follow, picking a side on this or that, where the line might have been a little bit more centrist if it weren't for those distinctions made by Tea Party senators. Well, what Kelly Ayotte has going for her, Richard, is that she's not up for election until 2016. And so uh, the question here is not whether her poll numbers take a dip in the aftermath of this vote uh, in April uh, of 2013. The question is whether there's going to be the same level of intensity behind this issue and the same level of financial support for gun control advocates that there is right now, largely coming from New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. If you do see a sustained uh, effort on the part of Democrats and other gun control advocates to make this an issue going forward, uh, then maybe there are repercussions. But it's been an awfully long time since Democrats ran on gun control in a national election. Ruth, uh, if there is another effort uh, in the coming months, how should it be done differently? Well, um, I think that the Alex ex is exactly right. The question about the impact of intensity and whether there can be some equalization of intensity from the uh, gun legislation side as much as there is from the anti-gun laws side is one thing. Uh, another thing uh, that needs to be done differently is, and, and it's going to be difficult, be uh, is to give senators some um, confidence that their vote won't be in vain. It's very much parallel to the discussion that we were having about immigration reform. The way you could get this gun measure into law is if it came out with a very overwhelming vote in the Senate that would then put pressure on the House. One of the reasons that the vote fell short last time around was that so many senators basically said, why am I putting my neck and my political future on the line for something that's essentially a meaningless vote? It's going nowhere in the House. So there has to be a capacity to show the senators a path forward to take this risk. All right. Thank you, uh, Ruth Marcus, you. for your time. Alex Alexander Burns as well. Thank you so thank much. You.